We got a pretty cool recipe to share with you today. We do a meatloaf on Rectech 1250 using Royal Oak, percent charcoal pellets, and it's gonna be fun. So let's get to prepping so we get to cooking. So come on. So what we got right here, we got about five pounds of hamburger meat. So what this is though, this is actually trimmings from a Wagyu black grade brisket that we have competition. We took the trimmings off of that, but we grind it down with a little bit of fat to had into it, we made hamburger meat. So this is a very fatty, heavy hamburger meat. So that mind, the technique we show you today is in regards to a very fat, heavy hamburger meat. And it doesn't have to be Wagyu, you can use a 70, 30 or whatever. But when you start doing something that's got a lot of fat base in there, we're gonna show you this technique to prevent you having a soggy meatloaf, but also having a loose meatloaf. That's what goal is for this recipe, so let's get started. Like I said, we got five pounds of Wagyu hamburger meat here. We grind this down, we're gonna start putting our eggs into it. I'm gonna use four eggs here. Um, I do enjoy using eggs in here because it does help me have kind of a binder into it. I feel like with Wagyu, I really need a binder. Take a spoon I got right here. I just wanna mix them up. And I'm gonna take it right here. I'm gonna pour it right on top of the hamburger meat. Once I got that, I'm gonna start just kind of mixing it in a little bit. Take my fingers and push it down in and fold it over. It's that really good bounce when I make the hamburger meat into the meatloaf. <clears throat> it'll have this whole shape. It'll be able to maintain some flavor stuff in there. Now I've got a little bit mixed up. What I'm gonna start doing now is I'm gonna start adding some of my vegetables to it. So I've got right here, I've got mushrooms, chopped onions, yellow pepper, and green pepper. You can add anything you want to it. This is just what I had in the refrigerator that needed to be cooked, so we've done it. Didn't have a red one, or I would have added red bell pepper too. So we just wanna start taking some in. And just start putting like a scoop of each at a time and just start mixing it in. And then when you do this, you can kind of tell if you got to the point that you want to stop in a sense. If you have enough vegetables in there, you can stop. You can do it this way and keep adding it. So I'm gonna take that. Now, the next thing I'm gonna do is start adding another binder to it. You can add stovetop stuffing, you can add bread, you can add whatever you want to. I'm using that saltine crackers. This is wheat saltine crackers we got right here. My hands are greasy, so I open it up this time. So I'm using saltine crackers. These are wheat saltine crackers. I'm just gonna add a little bit to it, about half of it, and I've just crushed it up, and I'm gonna start taking it and mixing it into it. And what it's gonna do is when I act kind of as another binder, and it'll start absorbing some of that oil to maintain that moisture and that flavor into this meatloaf. Because one thing, like we said, is we got a very fat, heavy meatloaf, so we need kind of another something to it to add a little bit more of a consistency factor. Once I've got that, I'm gonna do it again. Now, I'm gonna add some rub to it. This is Rufus Teak Steak Rub. If y'all watching my videos, you know I use this a lot on beef. I love the way it has a consistency with the garlic and the salt. I love it with beef. This is what we got here. This is uh, Wild Cacao by the Slab. This is a beef rub. It's got a good flavor to it. Kind of a more barbecue flavor that we're gonna add to it. Again, salt, a little bit of sugar to it. Kind of adds a little bit of a different flavor to it from a barbecue standpoint. That's what we're looking for. And if you like to say, if you're trying to do something like this for keto, you can do this. You can use different rubs that's designed for that. So it doesn't have the sugar in it. It's got other things to it, but from a Everything else, this would be a pretty good recipe for that. Now when I put the sauce on it, I kind of take that out of the equation. So you can use some of those other sugar-free sauces that can make that work. But that's kind of up to you as far as what you're looking for. So I'll do it one more time. All right, so we got Wagyu beef hamburger meat all mixed up with our vegetables and our onions and stuff here. We're gonna set it to the side. I'll get my pans ready, so I can show you this technique we use to make sure you don't have a soggy meatloaf. So, be right back. So we're gonna put a tin foil and wrap our pan here to show you this technique. But first thing, we got a lot of grill. Let's light this rectangle to our pizza and you get up temperature. It's very simple, come right here at the end of it. I'm gonna put it on. We got it set 300 degrees. We got it going on. We already got Royal Oak charcoal pellets in the back of it. So we already got the pellets in, but it's a very simple unit and I love it. We got the meat pros in there, so we'll be able to add it to our meatloaf. So, let me show you what I'm gonna do with this. So normally when you cook a meatloaf, cook it like a loaf pan, you can cook it in the oven. The moisture of a lean meatloaf is gonna come there and kind of maintain moisture in that loaf through a loaf pan. However, if you do a fat heavy meatloaf, it'll be soggy. 
the technique we use today, we use this pan, we actually gonna turn it over and we cook it this way so that the fat's got the ability to get out of there. So much fat's in there, I'm not worried about it getting dry. I'm worried about it just not getting soggy. So let's go, show what we're gonna do. So first off, take one of your oldest pans you got here. This is one we've used many times in the grill. So this is not my presentation pan. So I'm gonna take this one and wrap it in tin foil. Wrap that over. And then we're gonna do one more side on the back side and double it up. So now we're gonna take this, take this over, start putting a meat look on it. So now we've got this wrapped up here. I'm gonna take some pan, some olive oil pan, and lightly spray the back side of it. This is not for me to worry about this thing sticking. What this actually is, it's something that'll allow my rubs to kind of stick to this pan. So when I put my meatloaf on top of it, it'll be able to still have the rub on the back side of it. So I got my meatloaf right here, my pan's got my season on it. I got it mixed up, let's dump it out. Now what I'm gonna do is I'll start massaging this into shape. Start pushing it in and pushing it down. I'm basically trying to, trying to press it. So I got a shape that I'm looking for. This is where that binder's kind of absorbed the moisture in there. It's gonna allow me to help it maintain shape while it's cooking. And if you like a flatter, longer meatloaf, you can do that. If you wanna do one that you wanna make sandwiches out of, you can do a log of that nature. It will flatten out some while you're doing it. So just remember this, but we got just trying to make the pain our shape right here. What I'm basically doing, I'm pushing it to when I'm pushing it, I'm not seeing it cracks in it. I'm trying to get it tight right here because it's got like right here, it's got a lot of vegetables there, so it's gonna crack it down a little bit. So I'm just trying to push it in there so I can get the, the shapes I'm looking for when it starts so it won't start cracking. Because if it cracks now, it'll crack when it's cooking. I think it's pretty good, don't you? I think it's pretty good. All right, so now start putting some seasoning on it, on the outside of it. Don't want the ends to feel left out. The wind's blowing pretty good through here, so I'm getting a lot of rub off the meat. So that's kind of what, I keep going a little heavier, because a bunch of my rub here going off the meat. We got this. Now we went to Rectech to get our temperature. We'll put this bad boy on. Hey, okay, so Rectech 1250 is scope temperature. We're cooking at 300 degrees. We went to put a meatloaf on the grill and get this party started. So let's go. So I'm taking a meat probe here, I'm putting it in our meatloaf here. I'm putting it right here in the dead center. So I'm gonna come kind of at an angle because of this grill and stuff here. Go here, I wanna be about the middle of the meatloaf, dead center. Let me shut this bad boy down. Hey, so I got a question for y'all. You got a red chat 1250 here, it's cooking. Loading machine, great unit here. We got a problem. I haven't named it yet. I need y'all's help to help me name this grill. So if you don't mind, leave in the comment section below. Give me some ideas of what we should name this here Rectech 1250. And one of those names will be the ones we end up naming it. So do me that favor. So stick around, we'll keep checking on this thing about every 30 minutes. I expect it to take about two and a half hours for this meat up here to get up the temperature and cook it. We're looking about 155 to 160, somewhere in that neighborhood. We'll maintain moisture, but the meat be done. So stick around, be right back. All right, we got our meat up here. We reach temperature we're looking for, we're gonna pour this bad boy off, we'll start putting some sauce on it. Let's pull it off. As you can see, we're taking the meatloaf out of Rectech 1250. Now we're gonna put the sauce on it. We will turn this off and let it start cooling down. Just enough temperature to kind of set my sauce. I don't need to cook it no more. It's already cooked this temperature I'm looking for. So let's turn this off and start saucing this thing up. Just gonna hit the power button. It'll go through the cool down phase. You'll hear it cycle on and off. 
the sauce, sauce I'm using today is Rufus Tea Honey Sweet Sauce. Get a little sweetness to it, and that's kind of what you're looking for meatloaf. But you can use anything you like, ketchup, whatever, it doesn't matter to you. We're just going with kind of a barbecue flavor here. So I'm gonna take that, I'm gonna take a little bit of this fat around the outside perimeter of it. I'm gonna take it and use it kind of thin it out a little bit. Brush it on, keep putting some of this fat in there. So we're going to take this right now, set this back in the rec deck while it's going through the cool down phase and just let that temperature kind of just set this sauce in. Let's put it back on the grill. Alright, it's been about 10 minutes here. Check our meatloaf and see how she looks. So now we got our meatloaf off of our Rectech 1250. The sauce kind of good, got a little tackiness to it we're looking for. We're going to take this, play it up, slice it that way up, and we'll see what she tastes like. So stick around, we'll be right back. All right, so we got our meatloaf here. It's been resting outside the Rectech. Let's slice it that way up. Let's see what it tastes like. I'm going to come right here, we're right down the middle of it. Get a little slice out of it. Pull this off. Why don't you just look at that right there? See that thing there looks? Look at the beauty of that right there. Looks like a pure masterpiece, don't it? That's how you cook meat loaf, leave off the smoker style. Let's see what this bad boy tastes like. Right out the heart of it. Still a little warm. It's good and juicy in there. <laughs> that is perfect. That's the perfect meat loaf right there. Good simple recipe. Allow your meat to maintain moisture. Just use a fatty hamburger meat. It works as good. Works good. The wagyu kind of gives a little bit different flavor to it. You can add some beef calories to it if you want to. But remember, the whole purpose of this was is I like a more of a looser meat loaf that is not soggy. And that's what this is. When you can see it, it's not a packed, like a packed brick type uh, meat loaf. This is kind of more of a looser meat loaf. Kind of giving me a better texture, better flavor to it. It's not near as dry. That's good. That's really good. So take this recipe and take this technique and give it a try next time you do a meatloaf. I promise you, you won't be disappointed. It's got an awesome flavor to it. The technique, the way we're cooking it, maintain moisture to it. Use a fatty, heavy hamburger meat, you'll get some really good results. So thank you for watching our videos. Please like, share, subscribe, turn the notification bell on. Also don't forget to follow us on social media, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and TikTok. Now that being stated, we're gonna ready to say the blessing, go inside and eat this for lunch. But first, we gotta let Dolly try it. Dolly, you ready? You ready? You ready for this? All right, let's see if you like it. <laughs> well, Dolly liked it. I reckon Dolly like it. You will too. Let's say the blessing. Let's go eat some lunch. Lord, bless the food. Bow receive you. Same prayer. Amen. Thank you for watching the videos. Dolly, is that a pretty good one? I thought it was really good. Good Lord, I'll give me another piece. Here you go. <laughs> Your mother kill me. Ain't that good, Dolly. <laughs> Yo, are y'all still watching? Need to try the recipe.